and today's lecture we will be doing problem 13.34 which is related to spur gear we will do for cell analysis on that so here in this problem we have two gears uh, one is named as gear 2 and other one is gear 3 gear 2 is mounted on shaft a and it is rotating like this and here this is the input torque this is gear 3 which is mounted on shaft b and there will be forces associated with these gears on the shafts so those forces are taken by the bearings for that we have installed four bearings bearing a b c and d this is y axis and this is x axis the z axis will be in and out of the page for this spur gear arrangement the diametral pitch is 5 teeth per inch and there are 18 teeth on gear 2 having pressure angle equals to 20 degree there are 45 teeth on gear 3 and the input power by the shaft a is 32 horsepower and shaft a is revolving with 1800 rpm now we have to find the reaction forces at the bearing a b c and d so for that we will have to find the forces on the gears first after that those forces will be transmitted to the shafts and to those forces there will be uh, reactions at the bearings if gear 2 is rotating like this then there will be a tangential force exerted by the gear 3 on gear 2 which will be outward or out of the page and that axis is represented by z similarly the radial component or the radial force exerted by gear 3 on gear 2 will be like this now how will be the forces exerted on the gear 3 the tangential component will be like this along the z axis and the radial component will be along the y axis like this so let's find out those forces for that first of all draw the free body diagram of gear 2 this will be y axis and this one will be x z axis which is out of the page in our original diagram this is shaft a this is gear 2 and this is the input torque which is actually because of the input power this will be the force exerted by the gear 3 on gear 2 in tangential direction but uh, that will be in positive z direction it is represented by w32t a radial component will be in y direction represented by w32r since the gear is mounted on shaft so because of these forces there will be a reaction forces on the shaft as well those reactions will be like this in opposite direction to the forces exerted on the relevant gear this is the reaction one which is represented by fr 2 t instead of t we can write z as well in fact you can represent this force by anything you can represent it by fz similarly this will be the second component of the reaction force on the shaft it is represented by fr 2 r now let's find out the input torque now as we know that p is equal to f into v which is also equals to torque into omega in our previous lectures we have talked about these relationships now let's take p equals to t into omega and rearrange it for the torque so torque is equal to p by omega and this chapter we are representing power with h so torque is equal to h divided by omega if this power is given in horsepower and you want to convert it into lbf form so multiply it with 550 similarly omega will be in rpm form means revolution per minute so instead of minute you can write 60 second which is in denominator of the denominator so it will come up to the denominator similarly instead of uh, revolution you just write 2 pi to convert it into radians so revolution per minute would become 2 pi by 60 radians per minute so 60 will come up to the denominator and multiplied with 550 so torque will be equals to 550 and 260 and 2 h divided by 2 pi omega but this torque will be in the units lbf into feet to convert feet into second just multiply it with 12 so as a result torque will be equals to 63025 into h by omega for the given problem the power is 32 and omega is equal to 1800 rpm so put that in the formula we will get torque is equal to 1120 lbf into h now let's find out the diameter of the pinion or diameter of the gear 2 as we know the diameter is equal to module into n which is number of teeth on the gear and module is equal to 1 over diametral pitch so d is equal to n by p for gear 2 n is 18 and p equals to 5 support so these values you will get 3.6 inches similarly for gear 3 n is equal to 45 and p is m for the both so 45 by 5 is equal to 9 so d3 is equal to 9 inches now let's find out the force exerted by gear 3 on gear 2 in tangential direction which is in z direction this force is actually responsible for power transmission or torque transmission so knowing the power or the torque we can find out the the force w32 t as we know that torque is equal to f cross uh, r cross f or t is equal to f into r magnitude wise so w32 t is equal to t by r and r equals to d by 2 so f equals to t by d by 2 we know the values of t and d we will put these values to get w32 t torque is 1120 lbf into inch and uh, d is equal to 3.6 inches so w32 t is equal to 622 lbf now let's find out this radial component gear 2 will be meshed with gear 3 like this this will be the line of action and this will be the pressure angle 
that is 20 in this problem let me draw it cleanly so this is the line of action and this is the pressure angle these are the rectangular components of the force exerted by gear 3 on gear 2 so tangent pi is equal to perpendicular by base here perpendicular is w3 to r and base is w3 to t so rearranging this formula for w3 to r so for radial component this is that relationship the tangential force is 622 lbf and pi is 20 so putting the values so w3 to r is equal to 226 lbf now let's find out the reaction forces on the shaft we can find out those forces uh, from equilibrium that is sum of the forces in z direction is equal to zero and sum of the forces in y direction is equal to zero as both the tangential components are in z direction so sum of them will be equals to zero they are in the opposite direction so magnitude wise they are equal similarly the forces in radial direction will be equal to zero which are in y direction so magnitude wise they will be same hence fr2t is equal to 622 lbf and fr2r is equal to 226 lbf we know this component and we also know th this component so we can find out its resultant which will be something like this its resultant can be found out from the Pythagoras theorem which is the sum of the square of one component and square of the other component whole under the root so square of 622 lbf plus square of 226 uh, lbf whole under the root it will give us the resultant force reaction on the shaft A so it is equal to 662 lbf now we know the reaction force on the shaft A so this reaction force will be equally divided and will be equally taken by the bearings A and B so 331 lbf will be taken by a and the same will be taken by b now let's find out forces on gear 3 this is the z axis and this is the y axis gear 3 is mounted on shaft b this is gear 3 the tangential force on gear 3 will be like this which is represented by w23t and this one will be the radial component represented by w23t r and these will be the reactions on the shaft b one will be w or fb3t and fb3r this will be the output arc can be named as t out both the gears are meshed like this gear 3 is forcing gear 2 in this direction tangentially so gear 2 will force gear 3 in this direction tangentially force on gear 3 in radial direction is like this and force on gear 2 because of gear 3 radially will be like this from this we can see that same forces will be exerted on both gears but direction wise they are opposite that is why we have taken these forces equal to each other and it is also according to the Newton's law. Action will be equal to the reaction magnitude wise but opposite end direction. Means W23T will be equal to W32T. Similarly W23R will be equal to W32R. Now from sum of the forces in one axis will be equal to zero. So this force will be equal to this and this force will be equal to this. Now let this is the reaction force on the shaft B which according to the Pythagoras theorem will be equal to square of this plus square of this whole under the root as fb3t is equal to w23t which in turn equals to w32t or 622 lbf similarly this force is equal to this which in turn equals to this which is 226 lbf so we can say that resultant force on shaft b is equal to resultant force on shaft a so fb3 will be equal to 662 lbf this is the shaft and this is the reaction on it and we have mounted two bearings c and d each each bearing will take same force and that force will be equal to the half of the resultant force so it will also be equal to 331 lbf 